from South Ockenden in Essex, Sir Cromanos. Ah, oh, Sir Cromanos, looks lovely. Shame about the drivers. Well, you people out there in Robot Wars, you've got no idea the stress that Cromanot goes on. Yeah. I, I, unbelievable. Philippa, what jacket I shall I wear? I can see that it'll be the silver one. I, I just can't make my mind up. Can you pick one? Any interest in who you're fighting against? What, the robot? Yeah. Well, the jacket's more important. Oh, pick sorry. The lucky it is. Out. It is. Right, come on. Come on. Where did you get these? Well, my, my tailor, Anthony's not here today, and I just thought, well, if you pick one out for me, then uh, maybe that could be the lucky one. <laughs> Where did you get this? <laughs> I think things like this are illegal. <laughs> I want you to wear this one. No! <laughs> We're talking class structure here. An American truck wheel hub turned to an invincible self riding CO2 gas flipping machine, which they claim is razor proof, bomb proof, and Jonathan Pierce proof. Stephen Ray, make my day. From Chelmsford in Essex, GDH2. Steady, well protected. Quick too. A robot new to Robot Wars, a team with experience. So, so tell us about it. This is our uh, latest entry for uh, for Robot Wars. It's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's designed to look like an endurance racer. It's pretty fast, uh, and it's got two quite powerful flippers. How fast? How do you know? Well, because we've uh, tried it in a car park, but that's only one. <laughs> Looks like an endurance racing car. The front flipper acts as a Shremek, the rear flipper very powerful. Both conceal into the bodywork so opponents don't realise they're their new machine, but the robot has loads of experience. From Hereford in Herefordshire, I see you. Take a look at this, because they'll be looking at you. Now, they're not called ICU because of the intensive care connection. No, they're called ICU because there are eyes all over the robot, all seeing eyes. Do you want to know who you're up against? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you whether you like it or not. <laughs> GBH, yeah. Alien, and Chromalot. Oh, doddle, doddle. A doddle? Oh, what does the team yeah. captain say? Yeah, it shouldn't be too so much problem. Four-wheel driven, powerful, quickest in the heat, the axe is threatening and the all-seeing eyes will miss nothing. I wish I could say the same about the driver. Are they experienced enough? From Keith Hayes in Staffordshire, the alien. Now, this could be the one for the heat. Confident, perhaps too confident. You're going to be hitting ICU, GBH and Chromalot. Chromalot, yeah. I don't know about chrome a lot. I, I, to be honest, I think we'll be pushing them down the pit. The other two, I think they'll be in pieces. Fighting talk, I love it. Powerful robot with 24 volt, 1,000 watt motors, driving a 12 kilo spinning hammer at 1,000 RPM. But pneumatic tyres, hopes could soon be punctured. Roboteers, stand by. In the pod, the class at boys, the Chromalot, Steve Merrill and Ray Tate and ICU, Nick Pritchard, the captain. And they're on the left-hand side, GBH2, Mike Smith, the captain, Steve Dove with him and little Alex and the alien with Carl Aspin, the captain. In the arena for the house robots, Growler, Mr. Psycho's pet and Shunt with the bulldozer. Three, two... Whatever happens to the Sacromalot team, they are great value, great fun, great showmen. And Stephen Ray, it would be great to see your machine down the pit. And oh ho ho, I see you can see no longer. Boggle eyed, they are no more. GBH is turned over. The alien has started well. GBH has righted in flamboyant stuff. This is a terrific melee so far. I see you back in the action, those cyclists, but of course, those eyes are only boggling for effect. The alien right in there and Sir Cromwell in the thick of it as well. They've never really lived up to their sheen and preen. Sir Cromelot, can they do it this time? The alien self-right. There's a spinning hammer at the back. I couldn't pick a winner out of these four so far. Very, very close. I see you there onto the arena sidewall. Depressing the bit release button. Almost inadvertently, they were shoved onto it. I see you, Zach, comes out to Cromel on his flipped over. Can they sell? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love that. Looking on, Ray Tate. Looks mean and merciless, didn't he? Wouldn't like to cross him up there in that pod. Look at ICU. This is one of the closest melees we've had in Robot Wars, the sixth war so far. It is brilliant. Shunt comes out with the axe down on ICU. 
who also a little twitch of its own axe. There you can see the back of Steve Merrill, designer, builder, driver of uh, Sacroma, who runs a video company. ICU comes back in with its own axe going down. There's the alien right at the heart of it as well with its own weaponry. Look at that! Streamac of GBH2. I'll be back, it says on the underside of ICU. I'm not too sure whether they'll be back from that though. Can I see you write themselves 96 kilos? Mmm, don't think you will be. Meanwhile, right at the heart of the picture, GBH2 is still trying to create more mayhem. The Red Fox comes across ICU, could be the first to fall. Then who knows, it may be a judge's decision to decide who else goes through. Steve Merrill looks on. The Red Fox about to count out. ICU, no more. They've gone. So, who else will fall? It's a chrome a lot, GBH2 or the alien. I see you into the CPZ for the final rights. The alien has a grip on Sir Chromalot. GBH2 with an enormous shove came in there. I see you's hopes tattered. Sir Chromalot trying to self right. Look there at the dent. Did you see it? In the truck wheel hub there. And I think Sir Chromalot, this has been their best robot wars for me. Are oh, teetering on the brink of oblivion? No, they could have self righted just in time. GBH comes in with another slam. Time is ticking down, of course. ICU's first appearance in Robot Wars has ended with them being counted down and out, but not with a final flourish from the floor flipper, of course. Bang and crash. With another little piece of an eye come off there. <laughs> to Chromalot. Top left, there you've got uh, the big GBH2. Little dome on top of the racing car effect, and it has been fast, it has been nippy. Could take on Le Mans there. You can see Growler at the bottom of your picture, the house robot's coming in, I think. So Chromalot's overturning the CPZ. Growler's gonna dump ICU in the pits. <laughs> Gone not in the tries, but in a pool of smoke, and Shunt just came in to have a look. So Chromalot desperately trying to self right the CPZ. I think the clock's gonna help them. I think they're going to be counted to a Six. judge's decision. They are with GBH2 and the alien. The judges will have to decide. Brilliant battle, so close. They all end up together, that's fitting. Oh yes, what an amazing fight. Now I see you are definitely gone. The judges, however, have to reach a decision on the other three competing robots, and I wouldn't like to do it. While they're making up their minds, let's see some highlights. Too tough for me to call, I see you. <laughs> we knew where they were going to end up. GBH took punishment, but look at that for style. Look at that for control and aggression from Sir Chromalot, and again. The alien weren't bad in there as ICU took its punishment. Sir Chromalot ended up on its side. I wonder if that will count against it. Very difficult for the judges to call. The judges have made a decision. And controversy reigns as usual on Robot Wars. The judges have decided two to one that although Chromalot was caught on the arena wall, it was the end of the fight and it wasn't fully immobilized. The judges feel that Chromalot throughout the fight did enough damage to go through. And they've all decided that Alien goes through. GBH going into the competition. The damage on this robot, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's some damage for you to see. There's some damage for you to see. And there's some damage for you to see. But on the whole, it was a good fight for you, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You did really well, you kept moving, you got mm. some attacks in there. Yeah, but we almost went in the pit a few times. You did, but what has gone wrong? I don't know, I mean, Div, Div Mark was down on damage, that's where he comes down on. I mean, we, we were still running at the end of the bout. We got turned over a couple of times, but we self-righted, so, I don't know, so I think it's just the damage that's uh, taken us out, basically. The people in the pits are all saying, uh, I mean, they're all amazed. I know, well, we were, I must admit. He drove really well. I mean, you did, didn't you? So, was it, what's yeah. it like to be in charge out there? Well, it feels quite good, but also you feel a bit nervous when you get in, 
Well, listen, we all think you did fantastically well, and we think you should have gone through. A bit disappointing, though. It's so. very disappointing. But um, that's what it's about. You've got to square your shoulders and start again. OK? Yep. Well done. Now, you did really come off badly. We did a bit, didn't we? Yeah, but never mind, never when mind. When you flew through the air in the arena... <laughs> It's good, wasn't it? Were you losing bits? <laughs> Look at the state of it. Yeah, it's a bit sad, isn't it? That was straight before we started. It was, it was straight. Look at it. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, yeah. We come here to enjoy ourselves and we've enjoyed ourselves. What was the worst bit? What was the best bit? Oh, it, it was all good, really. What would you do to improve your robot? Um, probably scrap it and start again. <laughs>